And we are moving on. Uh, we are moving on to the next part of the event. And that will be under an open question. Addressing all levels, what does it mean in practice? What does it mean in practice? And we do have someone to give us his answer. But before that, let me uh, put on another word cloud. Another word cloud, work cloud, world cloud. Putting this all together, the question is, what do you think of when you consider concept of all levels in the MSP context? So what do you think of when you personally consider the concept of all levels in the MSP context? So the, work, the, the word cloud will be uh, open in a second. And during the next uh, speaker, you will be able to put your answer. And again, the shorter, the better. But now it is my true pleasure and honor and privilege to give the word to someone well, I think Rona will agree with me that a conference without a keynote speech is the same as uh, visiting Edinburgh without uh, tasting a, a sip of a good single malt whiskey. So the <laughs> single malt whiskey in uh, this conference, a true legend, a true MSP legend, and according to his own words, a real dinosaur, an MSP dinosaur, representing the researcher, uh, representing the Maritime Institute of uh, University of Gdynia, Jacek Zauka. Thank you very much. Uh, but I would say with Edinburgh, that visiting Edinburgh without going, you know, to the Arthur seat is something very bad. Yes, I can, I can see Arthur's seat from my window. So I will pass on your good regards to our extinct volcano out of the window from the flat. <laughs> okay, so uh, I was asked to talk about all levels. So next slide. So my first, you know, thinking was, what do you mean by levels? What is the meaning? And, and you can see that they are very different association related to that. It's a hierarchy of power. You know, who can say in your MSP no, or who can say you how you should do MSP? You know, there is a, such an old Roman proverb, uh, uh, Roma uh, locuta causa finita. So the question is now where we have Roma in Brussels, in Berlin, or perhaps we have Roma in Helsinki with the Helsinki Commission. But also it's, you know, association with climbing up. You know, you are a ju junior MSP planner, then you are uh, experienced MSP planner, then you have a final stage of dinosaur MSP planner. Or uh, you can see also these levels in keeping a balance. You can see this device for measuring balance. It's also called level. And, um, you know, for keeping horizontal position, it, it's very important also task for, for MSP. And then I had also association to the, the games, because in the games you have kind of inter, interdependency. So what does it mean? That you should fulfill some task to go ahead. And perhaps it's also about levels and about spatial planning a little bit. So please go to cloud and please look, what do you mean by levels? Uh, next slide, please. And uh, yeah, here on this slide, you can see my own intuitive way, how we, I mean, this is my interpretation, how we interpret levels in MSP. Because we have EU levels, it's, it's directives, then we have C basin level, for example, health conversa guidelines, principle, national level, which is responsible for MSP planning, sub-national level. In Polish case, it's, uh, it's uh, giving you permits, building permits. And then you have local level, which is responsible for genuine investment, for example, port in investing according to your plan. Next slide. But, uh, you know, uh, I also came back to, to, to our discussion in the Baltic Sea region to the participate project. And I am really grateful because it was our first thinking about that. Uh, this is a great job of Angela, of Beth, also our institute. And you can see here how we approach it. So we looked on different levels, what are the tasks and the responsibilities. And then we make such a, a funny diagram that we have multi-levels and then we have uh, cross-sectoral dialogue, or not only cross-sectoral, but cross-country dialogue, cross-border dialogue. But here, it was a very important part of this conceptualization because the key role was assigned 
to national level, which means this national MSP focal point. So in our country, I can do whatever I wish. I can approach different stakeholders and these stakeholders were described very broadly. I mean, in this conceptual framework, but if I want to discuss stakeholders from Sweden, I must go through Swedish MSP. And this was very handy. I mean, this was, uh, this uh, facilitated our work. Next slide. And then you can see here this, uh, you know, uh, handbook on uh, multi-level consultation in MSP, which was prepared under this project. And you can see that all levels were uh, addressed there with different tasks. Because for example, EU level mainly for screening resources, for looking what they can offer us. So the, the, the key task and in, with different timing, sometimes at the beginning of the uh, given stage of MSP, because you have on the left-hand side, you have stages. Sometimes at the end of the stage, we can ask them of the opinions, we can ask them about resources and so on and so forth. So, so you can see here, we, we made a very huge conceptualization. Next slide. And looking on this conceptualization, I must say it has a lot of advantages. Why? Because we have coherence between plans in a given C basin because we are working together. We have a kind of common denominator, such a common denominator in Baltic region, this famous vision of uh, endorsed by Vasab Helcom, which was also prepared by one of the projects. We have also, we are paying attention to the most important grand challenges, for example, climate change, we discuss it a lot, and uh, good environmental status, it's coming from EU level somehow. We have also limited transaction costs because we know how to cooperate each with other. We have fixed channels for cooperation. And then what is very important is that the grassroots experience from local national level is coming up to the political level, you know, on the Baltic Sea level or uh, EU level. Next slide. But there is one problem. There is one problem. And this problem is named jurisdiction. So all those levels, they are based on jurisdiction. So they have some legally, I would say, formulated task with regard to MSP. And this is very great because we will not omit anybody, but somehow it is also challenging. So next slide. So here I would show you, because here you have all levels specified. I mean, it's a mapping of stakeholders done in the participate project. And if you are looking on this, you can see that those small guys, you know, um, aquaculture enterprise, uh, fisher, there are only few on this list, or NGOs. So majority of them, they are big boys, you know, which jurisdiction with concrete task with something to do. Next slide. And this jurisdiction, uh, you know, was discussed recently uh, by uh, some spatial planners here. I quote one of the most renowned spatial plan planner, Andreas Faludi. Uh, he published a very interesting, I mean, it was a big story, but I will make it short because we have no time. So Andreas Faludi, his terrestrial spatial planner, as Rona knows, uh, but I have invited him to, to, to the Maritime uh, sp uh, sp uh, Spatial Planning Conference. And, and he started to be very engaged. And as a result of that, he published this paper. And here, uh, the main message coming from uh, him is that we are, through jurisdiction, we are creating the container system. So everybody has its own, so it's a kind of monopoly of uh, territorial representativeness. Everybody has its own task, it's taking care of the, uh, of the task, and we have a container, the containers can speak to each other, but, you know, those links between containers, they are not always uh, perfect. And next slide. Uh, and here I want to refer to my own work because here you can see my own definition of maritime spatial plan, uh, uh, maritime space. And in this definition, I am uh, I am telling that maritime space is constituted by the relation, by the interplay between people and some geographical objects. I mean, sea, biodiversity, environment. So the problem is. The problem is that we, if we omit some of those important actors who shape maritime space, that we are not planning maritime space because we are not conceptualizing it in a proper way. So there are some risks and solutions 
related to our thinking in terms of addressing all levels. And the rest of my presentation will be related to risks and solutions. So start with the risks. So next slide, and the hierarchy of levels, the key, uh, the key risk um, is uh, that we are not including, and it was discussed on all workshop, we are not including those who have no jurisdictions. And Rona, she said about businesses, how it's difficult to include them. Uh, and I would say my Polish experience is that the businesses are looking for jurisdiction. They are looking for support of these big guys to be supported. And the same problem is with genuine people. I mean, uh, my experience is, and as I told you during, during my workshop, that those people, they, they, they don't want to be so much included in MSP because they're asking whether, do I have a power to change the process? I have no jurisdiction. So I can say everything, I can be here, but that's it. And, and this is a problem. I mean, we should really think how to address this level, which is not in our minds, this level with no jurisdiction. Next slide. Uh, next is the problem of overlapping jurisdiction. Here is a slide from Sweden. Uh, we have uh, maritime spatial planning done by municipalities, by, by state. There is an overlap. I, I do believe that this can be addressed somehow um, by, for example, uh, beautiful culture of dialogue in Sweden. But I, I will give you a Polish example. When here uh, we have different sectors and, and those sectors, they claim that they have their own power to the sea and they want to play, plan the sea without listening to maritime spatial planning. Right? This is a typical overlapping jurisdiction. It's, you know, mining or it's uh, defense. It's, uh, it's also offshore energy. They made their own plan, I would say. So really something important is, you know, overlapping jurisdiction. Next slide. And then it's a problem of jurisdiction which don't see each other. Uh, there will be two slides here. The first slide is Polish example. We are planning policy. And then here you can see what is the important economic engine of Polish municipalities. And you can see green, which is tourism, and light blue, which is fisher. And now ask me, have we done a careful assessment of the impact of our plan on those two sectors? No, we tried to do it. We made it intuitively, but I would say it was because of our own experience. It was uh, our own wish, but, but I would say it was not a perfect example. Next slide. And here you have another example also coming from Poland. Perhaps it's not uh, relevant for uh, Finland or, or Germany, but how to include maritime uh, cultural heritage? How, how to include this lighthouse? Because lighthouse is on land. And I'm planning on the sea. So what I can do? I, I can uh, ensure that there is a view from the sea to the lighthouse. That's it. But I mean, this is a problem of jurisdiction which must, must look at us. Of course, there are plenty of solutions, but, but I am talking now about risks. And now the last slide about the risk. Uh, next slide, please. And this last slide is telling us about the situation, there is, there is no jurisdiction, but the problem is important. So here I am referring to this famous sustainable development concept, and we have environmental part, which is addressed by uh, uh, Marine Strategy Framework Directive. We have economic part, which was discussed so much in our conference, which is, you know, blue growth strategy, and then we have social part. And there's no responsibility for social part. Who is responsible for that? We planners, perhaps, but I mean, this was conceptualized only recently. So I, I, I can be pretty sure that it's a totally novel issue. And this is a part of this key concept of sustainable development. So now I will move to the solutions. Uh, so the first solution, of course, next slide, please, is you know to have informal dialogue. This informal dialogue in the form of uh, transnational projects, you can see Baltic, uh, initial experience on that, it's very important because here you can invite both those without jurisdiction, you can hear you are not under the pressure of time uh, and you can also sort out such issues like those overlapping jurisdiction like this, you know, uh, lack of jurisdiction or, or things like that. So, so this is very important way and very powerful way. I, I would say from Baltic experience, one of the most important 
ways of addressing all levels as a solution. Next one. So then it's trivial, the slide, because we discuss it a lot, but specific attention should be paid to those uh, without jurisdiction. I mean, here you can see the slide from the previous conference. And this was a Finnish experience of um, looking how people, uh, valor, uh, what is the valorization of people of, of sea space. So, uh, and, uh, yesterday, uh, Joanna Pivovarczyk he showed similar maps from Poland. And, 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 and I, I mean, here it's, it's really important because I, 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 I'm of the opinion that there is a need of kind of advocacy from the side of spatial planners towards those uh, which really are maybe not excluded, but uh, which have problems uh, to, to express their stakes for, for different reasons. And they have no faith that they, they, they will be listened. Next slide. And, and here is another solution. It's coming from the famous paper of uh, Bjorn Hassler. And this is a content-oriented and communicative coordination. So. It sounds very, very, you know, scientific, but it's very simple. So what you can do, you have Dennis Straits, and there is a problem. You know, the problem is uh, very concrete. Something should be done. And what we can do there is to start a dialogue on solving this problem between all relevant. I mean, even they have no jurisdiction in MSP, we should invite them, we should ask them, we should ask them for informal cooperation. This is content oriented, communicative. So they should communicate about the problem. And after this discussion, it can be lifted up to, to formal MSP. And of course, such fora we are attending here, they are playing such a role because somehow. We are conceptualizing some problems. We are telling that this problem is important, but, but this uh, content oriented means that you have a lot of different, uh, different, you know, um, uh, cooperative actors, uh, joint, uh, joint initiatives, discussing, looking for uh, solutions, and, and this might bring uh, this solution to, to, to including those without jurisdiction, to, to looking on this overlaps, cross-border cooperation, and, and things like that. Next. And of course, uh, next is very obvious. It's a creation of boundary spanning objects. So here you can see it's from my own work, uh, this book with Kira. And this is a, you know, illustration how Polish sea space will look like if we have only market without involvement of public sectors. So if everything is based on, on, on benefits, uh, on, on, on uh, you know, tangible uh, monetary benefits. So you can see here very easily that, for example, fishery is pushed out, that uh, uh, um, uh, energy, offshore energy is very close to, 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 to the coast because it's the best for them and things like that. And such objects, they are really great for creating the discussion between different types of people, different types of actors. So I really recommend, you know, using it. each map. I mean, each map we have in our plan is a boundary spanning object. Next slide. And of course, uh, the, the, uh, some other solutions that will be also trivial, but uh, trans transdisciplinarity is very important. So here you can see the slide from also very, uh, I would say, impressive publication of a Greek professor. Uh, he make a, a bibliographical uh, uh, examinations of all publication on MSP. And here you can see the keywords from those publications. And you, you can see how much spatial planners should bring together. It, it should be um, issues related to biodiversity, to, to, to environmental issues, but also to, 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 to uh, oceanographic issues, also to the social, political, as Rona said. So, 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 you know, all this should be matched It's a solution because if you make such a picture, you as a spatial planner, you will act as a boundary spanner. And, and this is very important work for us. Uh, next slide, please. And then uh, also cooperation, I mean, exchange of knowledge. So from the same paper, you can see clusters of scholars. I, I would not say scholars, 
scholar or practitioners uh, discussing MSP. You, you, you can see uh, uh, right hand side UK uh, and North Sea cluster, uh, right hand side lower part DSR cluster. And you can see those, those clusters are collaborating. And this is very important because then networking means linking perspective and dimensions. And this is a key for addressing all levels. And now I am approaching my last slide, uh, next one. And this is one more observation coming from participate, but it's important because this observation in telling, telling us that we have levels within levels. And, and this, we, we somehow we, we recognize it in the politics region and we find the uh, right solution. So what do we have? We have uh, national level, and this is national level, we have people from ministries that are responsible for, uh, you know, top issues, political decisions, and then we have planners. They are not the same, even if they are working in the same ministry, but usually they are working somewhere else in the agency. And then those two levels, they should see each other. I mean, it should not be like that, that this top political level, Vasab Helcom Working Group, is not listening to the planners. And we conceptualize it really great in the Baltic Sea region. Why? Because we have planners fora, we have this transnational project, the results of the transnational project are discussed by the Vasa Falcon Working Group, so there is a dialogue. You can see this dialogue here on this chart. But, but, um, but in many other sea regions, this is not the case. So therefore, I think it's uh, really important to underline. Next slide. And uh, to finish it, of course, uh, we have a lot of challenges. Uh, one is sea level rise. But here I want to say that um, from my point of view, I, I interpret the sea level rise as a kind of challenge of careful sea governance, combining all jurisdiction and paying attention to stakeholders without formal jurisdiction. This is my wish to you. This will make your plan capable to address all levels in reality. But of course, sea importance is rising. And this is a very important news for us because it means that we will be uh, useful also in the future for addressing key challenges in our regions. So next slide, and thank you very much. Uh, and now I was asked to, to, to give floor to the questions, so I'm open to answer, uh, because it was my own conceptualization of this all levels. The sea level and the sea importance is rising. What a great summary. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, we could listen to you for hours, that's for sure, but unfortunately our time is uh, is running out, so before going into the lunch break, I quickly wanted to show you the word uh, cloud results that we asked our uh, participants to share their opinion. And I think many of you, by sending those smiley faces and those hearts, that's actually a message to you. Because you are to MSP as the castle is to Edinburgh, that's for sure. So I think there are some, some hidden and not that hidden messages <laughs> to you in the word cloud as well. But what we see here as the most important words, and those are five. So it's stakeholders, complexity, dialogue, heart, and integration. So what do you say about these five? And what would be your one word if you had to choose one? Okay, I, I, I would say from, 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 from my my perspective, I would say open mind. Uh, so uh, openness, openness and once more openness. But of course, all of them, they, 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 they are, you know, related to, to, to this openness. So I am very great. And of course, complexity, integration, uh, and, and way of thinking outside the boxes is, is a key issue for, for success of addressing all levels. I agree. 